Um, after finding Mum's shoe and the coins and other stuff, uh, it made me think that a search wasn't done. So um, I asked um, the guys at the construction site if I could just go in, say a prayer for Mum. And, um, and while I was there, I just started moving rocks um, because I, I just felt there was more there to, to be found and I knew the police weren't taking it seriously. Um, so I moved the rocks for about, uh, about an hour. Uh, and then was pretty tired, so just sat down and just uh, I, I asked um, to ask Mum for some help. <laughs> uh, and that's when I, sorry, uh, and that's when I found um, parts of Mum's spine, um, which at, at that time we still had a bit of hope that she would come back. Uh, and then when when I started finding mum's remains, that's when uh, we, we started losing grip of that hope, but yeah. It's been 50 days since devoted grandmother Anna Jenkins was last seen. Anna Purani Jenkins, yang hilang sejak tiga tahun lalu. Um, her and Dad spent the morning together, um, and then uh, that afternoon, um, Dad um, or Mum had a dentist appointment, um, and she's been seeing uh, the dentist on Jalan Burma down in um, in Palauticus for five years. So she went to a dentist appointment, which is um, around about three three thirty. Um, had that, and then was um, uh, had the receptionist from the dental clinic call her an Uber um, to take her to Little Sisters before. Uh, and unfortunately, that's, uh, that dental appointment was the last uh, that we, we ever heard from her. Um, it, it's hard to make um, any sense of it because of the lack of investigation that was done. There's no corroboration of any story. Um, there was no DNA testing of, um, of the Uber driver's vehicle. There was no um, doing a search of you know, uh, his bank accounts, of, um, of his vehicle or anything associated um, with that. Um, we found six cameras, um, like street cameras and, uh, and private cameras, um, which were never checked by the police. Um, we identified three security guard stations, um, which is manned 24-7. Um, they never seen um, anything surrounding where mum was last seen. Um, so it's very hard to, to make any sense of why she would all of a sudden want to get out um, of the cab um, at that spot. And like I said, nothing's been checked and nothing has been verified, but that's actually what occurred. He said that he picked her up from the, um, from the dental clinic. Uh, he said that mum um, just remained quiet, sat behind him, um, said she asked one question along the way, which was um, what was a, uh, a building uh, along the way just before they got onto Jalan, Scotland, uh, which was um, the Penang Public Hospital or part of the Penang Public Hospital. Uh, and other than that, um, yeah, she, she didn't, say, uh, didn't say much other than um, near the drop-off point, she asked to get out of the uh, Uber for an unknown reason, yeah. Just simply said that she wanted to do, um, to, to get out. Um, he said the safest place, because it was a, um, a busy area, uh, the safest place was to drop her off at, um, at the Ramakrishna, uh, which is a school and orphanage. Um, again, it, it still doesn't make sense to me because it was also a busy time in that, um, in that area for school pickups. Um, so there was a, a constant stream of, um, of vehicles there was kids playing soccer um, on the Oval at the time and no one seen anything. Uh, police um, took a statement from him. Um, we asked about the statement from the officer in charge and he stated that because he had signed the statement, um, they classed that as fact. So there was no need to do any further investigation. It was up to our family uh, right from the word go to, to start doing everything. Um, we were naive 
uh, in the beginning, thinking it was a Commonwealth country, it would be under um, some type of Commonwealth law, um, and we would uh, we were expecting the police to act as if they were in in Australia. So we kind of um, like they didn't turn up for the first meeting um, that I organised, which was 9:30 at night. Um, they didn't turn up for that one. We rescheduled for the next night again at 9:30. Uh, just after midnight, um, still no word from them, they wouldn't answer calls, they wouldn't return text messages. And it wasn't until the third night where they finally um, turned up and you almost instantly knew there was some type of bias um, towards us. Um, whether they, um, they thought mum had run away or um, suspected the family had something to do with it, there was no, uh, there was no investigation at all. But the, the lack of interest in mum's case. Um, so when we finally sat down with them the first time, I offered um, them to take mum's phone so they can search it, take dad's phone so they can search it. Um, I said, do you want me to go get the phone records from the hotel um, so they can have a look to see if there's any numbers that were, um, that were randomly called. I asked if they wanted to go up to mum and dad's room to do a search. Uh, each thing they said no, no need. Because in that first meeting we had uh, one of the sergeants that kind of just slouched back. Um, he had the uh, little man satchel, um, so that was just across his chest and sat back and just didn't really look interested and the other officer was looking at, um, at cakes uh, in, the, in the cafe uh, and wasn't really again interested in, in hearing anything um, no statement was taken from me, um, no statement was taken from anyone of the family. You know, four and a half years later, um, I get an email um, through the, the High Commission to us saying that they wanted to know what Dad's background is, when he finished school, um, like what his work is, when he retired, and it's, it, it didn't make any, any sense to me at all. And it almost felt as though uh, they were gap filling um, to go, geez, we should have done this earlier. How about we start getting some bio um, details? But it, uh, at the time, my sister and uh, myself have got power of attorney for dad, so he can't legally um, speak for himself on, um, on matters such as uh, the, the police report. He, he first went downhill when we got the information about mum. Uh, it was almost at that point where the DNA report come back and confirmed it was mum. He, he kind of, it was almost like he'd just given up um, through words that he said um, and through just his, his general well-being, just really plummeted. To say that this is the first lead, um, not that the police have found, that the family have found, um, through, you know, at, at that stage we travelled over um, over 75,000 kilometres. We've handed out 12,500 posters. Um, we've put up stickers. Um, I've clung to bridges over busy roads just so I could hook up um, a banner over busy areas. Um, we've done, um, I think we've talked to nearly, I would say, hundreds, well and truly in the thousands of people. Um, we've searched every police station, um, we've searched every hospital, church, um, we've walked through sewers, we've walked through stormwater drains, rivers, um, through forestry, um, trying to find mum. And this was the first indication that, you know what, we, we might have something here. When I asked about the search, uh, it was, it felt like it was quite an aggressive meeting towards us that we didn't believe that a proper search had been done. Um, I, once, once that meeting was over, because uh, I felt like we weren't really getting anywhere, I asked them if they wanted uh, or had they requested external support through the Australian Federal Police um, because they might have technology that uh, the Royal Malaysian Police um, wouldn't have uh, and they just, just laughed at it to say no, a, a search had been done. Um, I asked to go visit the site uh, and I also asked to do a, um, a DNA test. I tried to get it done in Australia, but they wouldn't respond um, just to expedite the, um, the process. 
Um, so that was that was what we had done. So we went down to the Penang Hospital or forensic uh, and got the uh, the DNA first, and then went out to the um, to the construction site. Um, within two minutes of being at the construction site, so we parked the vehicles, walked on um, to where Mum's possessions were found. Um, I again asked them, like, did you do a search? And they said, yes, we, we did a, a proper ground search. We had canines um, that did a search as well. And um, I asked where it was mum's um, possessions found. And they pointed to a spot uh, as you go up the, um, up the back end of the, uh, the little um, park area. Uh, and within two minutes of me being there, I found mum's shoe. Um, within, I would say five minutes, I found um, some more coins. I found an appointment card. I found items from Mum purse that uh, we know she she would have. She used to love the Vicks vapor drops, mm -hmm. um, and just ate them like lollies. Um, just loved them. I found all of those wrappers. I found um, chewing gum from Australia, uh, and it's like cool. Uh, obviously, you guys haven't done a, a proper search. The amount of support that we've had from locals, um, the amount of support that we've had from friends and family, and I guess our persistence not to accept um, what was being dealt to us by the Malaysian police. Uh, and I think on the back of all of that um, is, is kind of how we had a, a breakthrough. So yes, 100%, definitely a miracle, um, but I think it was also the persistence um, from us that, that got that that initial breakthrough. I asked um, the guys at the construction site if I could just go in, say a prayer for mum. And, um, and while I was there, I just started moving rocks um, because I, I just felt there was more there to, to be found and I knew the police weren't taking it seriously. So I moved the rocks for about uh, about an hour uh, and then was pretty tired. So I just sat down and just, uh, I asked, um, asked mum for some help. Uh, and that's when I, sorry. Uh, and that's when I found um, parts of mum's spine, um, which, at that time, we still had a bit of hope that she would come back. Uh, and then when, when I started finding mum's remains, that's when uh, we, we started losing grip of that hope. But yeah, I feel as though we're the only ones taking this seriously. Um, like even after finding mum's shoe, I would have thought the police would do another search. But when the forensic team came out, I had to remind them to put on gloves. And as they, they were coming through, um, they were just picking up, um, you know, the the, uh, the findings. And I even said to him, shouldn't they be wearing gloves? And he yelled out to them, oh, you put your gloves on, so I had to put it back down. Mm. And it kind of, it, it just, it, it almost summed up the, the whole investigation that complete apathy and absolutely no uh, empathy um, for our family because we, we're sitting here watching them try and help us find our mum. And all we've just been met with is roadblock after roadblock after roadblock. And even, even at these critical points where we think, yep, we finally got a break, it's still met with, with complete and utter um, disregard for their own procedures. Uh, and disregard for, for what the family are, are, are going through and dealing with. We ended up finding 18 bones 18. all up, yes. Um, so it, again, after I found um, uh, the other parts of Mum's remains, it still took a couple of weeks of convincing um, the police to get the, um, the national forensic team to come down and do a search. So they come down to do a search and they found seven more remains. We were told that um, there was a match um, and that was mum, um, but it was just a verbal. So I said, can we get a, um, a proper report of all the bones? That broke us. 
um, because that was our last bit of hope that mum was alive and to have it come back as a, as a confirmation was, was just crushing. Um, to actually get that report um, was about a year. Um, yeah, I, I don't under, like, I understand we were going through COVID at the time, um, but I would have thought that would have slowed down a lot of processes um, in terms of coming in. Uh, but yeah, I, and I don't have an answer as to why it took so long. I think if mum was younger, I think if, uh, if mum was a different colour, um, I think if mum was potentially a different race, um, all of these things, I, I think uh, it may have been taken, uh, taken differently or a different approach to it. Um, being a foreigner uh, makes it a lot harder as well because you get uh, a lot more foreigner costs involved, like even to get um, the DNA report, that comes at a cost to us, even though it's a, it's a copy of what the police have, we still have to pay a foreigner um, fee on top of that. Um, I, I, I struggle to, to identify exactly why this like mum's case is, is any different. If we want justice, for, ultimately we want mum back. Uh, but that, that's, that's not going to happen, so we, we don't want her death just to be another, another statistic, another just chalk it on the board. Um, we want something to, to change, so we want justice for mum. We want um, police to change the way that they do their SOPs, so they actually take these cases seriously and investigate it in accordance with their, their SOPs. Um, we, we want people to feel safe. Um, around an area and if something does happen we want them to um, have that not so much satisfaction but the knowledge that the authorities are going to do whatever they can um, to, to help uh, help them out. We have a saying is um, if you can't run walk, if you can't walk crawl um, but whatever you do keep moving forward and that's that's kind of been a, a little bit of a, a mantra for us is making sure that we we not only fight for justice for mum, but I think it's bigger than mum at, at this point because it's now for every foreigner that comes to visit um, in, uh, Malaysia. It's for every local um, Malaysian. Um, but when, whenever you've got, you know, like a, a brother, sister, mother, father, cousin, whatever it is, friend, um, when they go missing, uh, the first point of call that everyone does is, is the police and you want them to know um, you know that that they're going to do everything within their powers to return that person back safely or to do whatever they can to find justice um, for those family uh, and I think in, in this case we we haven't received that um, and so that's why I think this this fight of ours is is not just us trying to fight for justice for mum it's 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 trying to make sure that you know the the trust in the the police force is, is there to know that they are going to search uh, whether it's a missing person uh, whether it's a crime whether it's a break-in whatever it is that they're, they're going to be there to to support <laughs>